if you are planning to do competitive programming you know further on these are the very important topics that you should master upon you can complete your learning in 2 to 3 months it is more than enough if you are consistent enough Hello everyone this is Vikrant and welcome to this new video by Coding Ninjas and today we are going to talk about that how long does it really take to learn data structures and algorithm so let's begin data structures and algorithm is a very important topic that you need to learn if you want to get into your dream company or rather any company if you want to become a software engineer so data structures and algorithm becomes very important in this scenario so there are few things that you know you should keep in mind before starting learning data structures and algorithm the first thing that do not learn anything that comes across you make a strategy and stick to it these things are very important because when you start learning you become aware of new topics so just don't jump to these new topics because you won't be able to learn those new topics you know very efficiently and the old topics that you were you know learning you won't be able to learn both so make a plan make a strategy and try to stick to it uh you know your learning should be in a particular order so that makes things easier for you the other thing that you should keep in mind is that you should be consistent enough let me tell you if you are not consistent if you are not you know learning regularly you will forget you will forget things you know you will know the basics but you won't know the implementation you will forget it so try to you know be uh, try to be consistent enough so that you know you can be very good and excellent at, at any topic the another thing that you should remember while learning data structures and algorithm is that you have to practice practice a lot because you know if you are just you know seeing the lectures and you are not implementing those data structures then it will do you no good it is apps uh, it is absolutely waste of time if you are not implementing those data structures into coding problems so you have to practice a lot of things and you know uh, i will tell you how to how you can do that later in this video but these are the few important things that you should keep in mind the first topic that you should start with is recursion because recursion is a topic that is going to be used a lot in you know later stages when you learn different type of data structures and implement them into coding problems and some of the coding problems are solely based on recursion only so it becomes a very important part also in you know when you learn bigger data structures like trees and graphs and or in dp also when you start dividing your problem statement into sub problems you need to have a you know idea of how recursion is working there because it becomes complicated there so you have to learn date uh, recursion thoroughly so that you won't face any issues later on the next data structure that you should start with is arrays because it is a very important topic where which is you know often used in every coding problems or anywhere we where we have to store similar kind of data so it gets used a lot so you should familiarize yourself with it very you know uh, thoroughly you should give it time to do different operations on it so that you can use it very easily in your coding problems the next question the next data structure that you should learn after arrays is linked list i cannot emphasize more that it is a very important topic very very important topic because most of the interview questions comes from linked list there are many many number of questions that you will find in your interview as well and in the coding round as well that are from linked list so you should give it you should give the most time to linked list as it is a slightly different topic but very easy and you know a very fun uh, data structure to learn so you should you know familiarize yourself with linked list as well after arrays the next data structures that comes up is tags and queues these are also very important topic 
and these are relatively easier topics to understand but while implementing you might find some difficulty initially you know how they are actually working how they are actually working in the background so if you give it some enough time you will easily learn them and you know you will also know the implementation of them as well and also stacks and queues are often used in graphs and trees as well so these are not the individual topics that you need to learn these topics you know will help you understand the other data structures as well so it becomes kind of important to give time to stacks and queues and learn it thoroughly the next topic that you should learn after these are hash maps it is also very fun and cool data structure that you know very unique and you know you will be having fun by learning this and it is a relatively easier topic to understand as well and to implement as well uh, after hash maps you should start with graphs and trees now these are the per se most complex data structures that need some little bit more time than the other data structures to really understand how they are actually working and there are so many implementations of graphs and trees and you know if you are if you are planning to do competitive programming you know further on these are the very important topics that you should master upon because most of the you know hard problems that comes in coding problems are from these topics only so and in graphs and trees you often use other data structures as well so it becomes very important that you learn these topics at the end of the data structures so that you know you can get them very easily and very effectively and you won't find any obstacles you know you might find uh, if the in trees and graphs you are using another data structures in the in the coding part and you have, you haven't done the other data structures so you might find difficult to implement trees and graphs so it becomes very important to do all the to learn all the data structures in a particular order so that you won't find any obstacles or any difficulties later on now these are some of the basic data structures that you should at least learn now there are some other few data structures or topics remaining that you can learn uh, you know and they will also be helpful to you i have given you the general layout of the things that you should follow and you should stick to your plan to your structure that how you, you are going to learn just stick to stick to that plan and you know you will be able to cover data structures and learn them very easily now everyone knows that just learning the things or just watching the lectures are not enough you have to practice a lot so how you should practice is very important now when you have covered a particular topic you should start with by doing coding problems on that topic only for this thing you can you know follow code studio where you can do coding problems on that particular only suppose if you have learned linked list you have watched the lectures and you know how to implement linked list then to do those coding question you just click on the linked list part and you will find only the linked list problems you just do those problems i am not saying to do hard or medium problems just do 8 to 10 easy problems so that you know how those data structures are getting really used you become familiarized with the code you know your speed becomes faster your mind you know takes over uh, you know you don't have to write everything on pen and paper because you can calculate most of the things in your mind when you have that 8 to e 8 to 10 easy problems you know how the data structure is actually working in, in the code so these things are very important while you are learning the data structures just learn a particular topic do 8 to 10 easy questions after after you have done most of the data structures and algorithm part now you just have to practice a lot and for practice you should also follow a particular pattern suppose if you have you know if you think you have to do 10 questions every day you don't have to do 10 easy questions only or 10 hard questions only just follow a particular pattern follow you can follow the ratio 5 3 2 five easy questions three medium questions and two hard questions you can you know increase or decrease the number of questions upon your requirement upon you know how much time you are giving it uh, to a uh, practice part so you should follow these patterns you know when you are doing regular easy questions medium questions hard questions what it does is by doing easy questions you 
gain a lot of speed of uh, you know writing your code also you build up your confidence that yes i have done at least these questions now i can do the other questions as well and by doing medium and hard questions you know you are really going one level ahead so that you know when you are giving in uh, coding rounds of another companies as well you won't find any new questions or any new difficulty you will be ready you will be ready to tackle those problems now the other things comes to mind is that we have to practice these problems as i have told you that a uh, one uh, platform is code studio it is a very great platform you can check that out the uh, other platform that you can use is lead code it is also very amazing platform and it has a very vast majority of questions and different type of different type of questions and you can also find uh, on some of the platforms uh, you know company based problems as well so you can also target companies based problems you know uh, when you are practicing for a particular uh, company so these things also helps you a lot as i have told you lead code is also a very great, great platform there are easy questions medium questions hard questions a number of uh, vast majority of number of questions are there and you can practice there as well you don't have to shift a lot between the platforms just stick to one or two platforms only you can do coding coding contests in other platforms but you know for practice just stick to a particular platform or two you don't have to shift a lot after you have practiced you know thoroughly or the num- many number of questions you you should start giving contest because by giving contest you you are well equipped to handle pressure you are well equipped to tackle you know in a particular time frame you, you can able to tackle number of problems very easily uh, it becomes very important that's why it becomes very important to give to give those contests you know and by doing all these things you know the learning data section and algorithm part the practice part on code studio lead code or any other and the contest part you can complete your learning in 2 to 3 months it is more than enough if you are consistent enough and as i have told you consistency is the key you can complete two, in 2 to 3 months your course the learning and in another 2 to 3 months you can easily master your data structures and algorithm so all in all it takes approximately 6 months to learn data structures and algorithm so uh, i hope that you learn data structures and algorithm and all the best to your future if you find this video useful give it a thumbs up do share it with your friends also subscribe to coding ninjas youtube channel and press the bell icon for few further videos thank you